Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with daytime highs in the upper 60s and breezy southeasterly winds. Thursday night showers may be a thunderstorm before midnight. Lows in the mid 50s with breezy southerly winds. Friday, scattered showers mainly in the afternoon. Partly sunny and 67. Breezy southwesterly winds again. By Friday night, mostly cloudy. A low of 48 with breezy westerly winds. Sunny and near 70 on Saturday. From for letting us be of service to you this morning. Joe Thomas in the morning, 434-882-4217. That's the phone number. You can also send emails to jtinthemorninggmail.com and uh, then you will interact in those ways. The phone number, if you're calling in, is going to be um, the voicemail. You're going to leave your comments uh, yes, it's kind of stolen from Rick Edelman. He used to do this on his financial program. Um, but we just don't have the interfaces necessary to go live with you just yet. But we're working on it so that uh, it'll be there. And, of course, uh, at some point very, very soon, WTON in Stanton, Waynesboro, Western Albemarle, question mark. Do we have a Charlottesville station? Do we have other stations who want to join in? this Chaucerian sort of caravan uh, into common sense in the morning. And uh, let's begin. I mean, we've got a lot to get into this morning. Philip Van Cleve from the Virginia Citizens Defense League is going to join us. I want to uh, get into the guilty plea in that horrific shooting outside of a Richmond High School that was uh, last year and just gripped everyone. This was uh, shocking and uh, now the shooter has recanted, wants to recant his guilty plea in that case, and the lawyer saying, "Yeah, I didn't quite make it clear what his options were." It's going to. There's a lot more going on in here. Blood, quote unquote, ketchup. Uh, the, the ketchup warriors. It's amazing what the protest world will do. The uh, authoritarian minions uh, smearing ketchup all over a Jewish families uh, display. I don't even know if it's a Jewish family. They just happen to have the Israeli flag hanging in front of the house, perhaps in solidarity, much like the Ukrainian flag seems to pop up everywhere. But nobody's smearing blood on the Ukrainian flag. Um, or fake blood, I guess, ketchup to look like blood. Uh, we'll get into that. Also, uh, the shooting that began in a housing complex in Waynesboro that ended with a standoff that snarled Interstate 64 for hours and hours and then eventually ended with a shooting, uh, police-involved shooting. So Virginia State Police are investigating the police-involved shooting aspect of it, but uh, from what one uh, ear witness uh, tells Blue Ridge Life magazine they heard seven shots uh, towards the end of the standoff but then there were hours once that occurred then it's the investigation and the searching of the vehicle and everything else because it was a car chase that followed this uh, shooting of another person in Waynesboro uh, that came to it funny um, as we head into our interview a little bit later on with Philip Van Cleef don't think anyone has said these were legally owned firearms that were involved in this, uh, and uh, stay tuned. We'll have more details on this. But let's begin with the rule and how in a representative republic, the voice of the minority is the key. It's why our judicial system is based on innocent until proven guilty, that the government has the much higher standard to reach in order to take somebody out of their freedoms and put them in incarceration. And yesterday, the House Freedom Caucus blocked a rule 
And you could say, but Joe, it's a parliamentary procedure. That's where the voice of the minority is protected. Procedure. When people say, oh, God, it just takes so long. It's so clunky and awkward. And why can't they just? Because the voice of the minority has to be heard. And in this case, the minority said the, the reforms, I think there were 54 reforms in the FISA reauthorization, the 702. We still have time. April 19th is the expiration of FISA. Um, and uh, Mike Turner, the fellow who uh, yelled fire in a crowded congressional uh, meeting, well, not technically, but I think governmentally, I don't think we've had a better example of somebody who yelled fire in a crowded theater. Mike Turner, chair of the Intel Committee, who's seeing his wallet probably getting a lot lighter uh, if FISA gets reined in, right as the vote on whether or not the Republicans would back heavy reforms, there were two different versions of what the Republicans would support on the floor, was when Mike Turner came out and said, we have intel of a pending, and, and everyone ran off to cover the, oh, let's go to the skiff. And then by the afternoon, people were coming out of the skiff saying, I don't know what he's talking about. This, this is stuff we knew about. Uh, by the way, stay tuned to this place tomorrow. Uh, I will be taking part in a session with Senator Mark Warner, chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, and I want to find out what he knows about the Dali and these uh, reports that there was uh, a cyber attack on the, the Dali right before and causing the power outage and, and the loss of navigation of the freighter ship before it hit the key bridge in Baltimore. So let's go back to FISA and this uh, uh, Surveillance Act and really the linchpin of the Department of Homeland Security and everything post 9-11. I guess first, first for the public record, let's, let's remind people what we're talking about. I'm going to read to you from an arcane document that some will argue is written by racists. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the places to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. And there's such beautiful simplicity and detail at the same time. You can be detailed and in specific, I think, at the same time. And the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is very important for uh, that very premise, its, its beauty and its simplicity. So uh, secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects. So even in 1789, the framers, George Mason, James Madison, and all the folks, Patrick Henry and James Monroe Key in the battle to get this document put into place, were keen to the idea that it may not only be paper. What if they had left the effects out? What if they had left the effects out? Would it cover Word docs or PDFs? And this is the, one of the beauties of the U.S. Constitution is its inspecificity actually allows for things like PDFs and Word documents and WAV files and things like that to still be protected under the Fourth Amendment, though, of course, the authoritarians would argue otherwise. Unreasonable searches and seizures. So the framers said, there, there might be some point where we need to find out you know, what's going on. And, and, and people point to this and say, well, define unreasonable. Well, they go on to do that. No warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. And this is where it gets problematic because we have judges who I don't think hold this part to be as 
specific as they should. Probable cause. Not provable cause, not definitely the cause, not you know, without a question of a doubt, but probable cause. Just like in a jury trial, uh, you're, you're supposed to find somebody guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Doesn't mean you can't have doubts, but are they reasonable? Probable cause. And this is where the FISA authorization comes in from where I sit. And your results can vary by all means. Again, uh, the phone number, which is up here, 434-882-4217. Leave your comments on this as a voicemail. And we'll get to them, uh, or you can do it uh, through the email at uh, JT, I, uh, JT in the morning radio at gmail uh, dot com. So the issue is the judge is what the judge is asked to do, and the next bit, supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. This became a problem, Rico, and some of the things uh, that uh, Mayor Giuliani and uh, U.S. Attorney Giuliani wanted to use to go after the mob. So we get some guy who's running the numbers. Well, if we get him to testify that John Gotti was the boss, well, then we can grab everybody because we now have laws that say guilt by association. Oath or affirmation. And again, that means right hand on the Bible, left hand in the air. I do solemnly swear. And what does that oath mean? Does that mean if you perjure yourself, you can go to jail? There are people who are in jail because they supposedly lied or had two different versions or a variation in their story to Congress, failed to report when Congress insisted they report, uh, or uh, came up with different stories when interviewed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation or the Federal Bureau of Investigation's interview doesn't coincide with something you told local law enforcement. And sometimes the margins on these things are very slim. Sometimes they're not. But this is why each case has to come from a blank slate. We, we watch our judicial system get just pilfered through the uh, morass of precedent and well you, you ruled like this in such and such a case 10 years ago so you have to no you don't have to look at this case run through it but each judge and we saw this during the Russiagate hoax we found out through some of the special counsel reports that these judges are approving FISA warrants at rates in excess of 95, 96, 97 percent. Are you telling me every single one of those cases was vetted through the uh, filter of probable cause and with sufficient oath or affirmation? No, that's not what the case is. And the special counsel's reports on Russiagate indicate that it was just because of familiarity with the Federal Bureau of Investigation agents that, oh, yeah, I know, he's a, he's a stand-up guy. He plays with my club and a chunk. Woo, off you go with a FISA warrant. And so the Congress wanted to do some things about this. And they did yesterday, even though they don't hold the majority because the majority of Republicans wanted to get her, you know, we're tough on crime, we're defending the homeland, and, and all the things that look good on a campaign mailer. But 19, including a bunch of folks that were through us here in Central Virginia just uh, about a week ago. We're, it, we're uh, standing up against it. Do we have the uh, Matt Gates stuff? Uh, we have, uh, do you have Matt Gates here from uh, his, his spot on this? 
Uh, yeah, so we have uh, Matt Gates here talking about uh, the vote yesterday. And uh, can, we, can we pull it up here? I know it's early. What did you do? Did you drink decaf this morning? Um, so uh, this is Matt Gates talking about the FISA authorization situation. Law 287,000 times. The The DOJ broke the law 287,000 times. They broke the law 38 times an hour. I don't think that they should have an extension of the authorities that have been so gravely abused. House Republicans. So that's uh, Matt Gates uh, on this. Uh, the leader of the House Freedom Caucus, uh, Congressman Bob Good, talked to me specifically uh, about this uh, um, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, and this was uh, his his visit with me on the subject of not just the uh, FISA reauthorization, but TikTok, uh, Byte Dance, and uh, what we know about our surveillance abilities see third amendment before we go to the bob good clip uh, we got to go to a break all right we'll come back with bob good but before we go let me read to you also the third amendment which actually in the framers mind was more important than the fourth amendment no soldier and understand in 1789 like the word press meant something different than it does in pop culture today the word soldier also meant government officer in the world of 1789. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Now, I brought this up to somebody. They said, but Joe, we're at war. We're at war with terror. Don't you remember the war on terror? Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer and Barack Obama and Joe Biden all voted uh, to authorize the war on terror. We're at war. Okay, have we prescribed specifically by law how we're going to station soldiers in your house or through the Wi-Fi network behind you at the coffee shop you're working on? We'll get in that with uh, Congressman Bob Good in just a little bit here on Joe Thomas in the morning. The Racing Wire Minute with Brian Belansky. Tires too good? Wait, what? That story next. She can stem. Wasn't it only a few weeks ago that people were all up in arms because the Cup Series Goodyear tires wore out too fast in Bristol? Now, after Richmond and Martinsville, people are up in arms because the Goodyear tires are too good. Joey Logano has implored NASCAR, do something now. Logano says the tires are too good. They didn't fall off enough. Logano says if you're looking to buy a tire on the street, that's the tire you want. You want the tire that's going to last forever. But that's not what we want as racers. For NASCAR's part, the series says it needs to work harder on its short track package. Here's my thought. The good drivers, they want tires that fall off. The others, not so much. Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with daytime highs in the upper 60s and breezy southeasterly winds. Thursday night showers may be a thunderstorm before midnight. Lows in the mid-50s with breezy southerly winds. Friday, scattered showers mainly in the afternoon, partly sunny and 67, breezy southwesterly winds again. By Friday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 48 with breezy westerly winds, sunny and near 70 on Saturday. From BlueRidgeLife.com, I'm forecaster Tommy Stafford on Joe Thomas in the morning. Joe Thomas in the morning, and again, you call, leave your comments, questions at 434-882-4217. By the way, uh, 
big thanks to Alan Powell and everyone at Pyramid Paving. Um, I know a bunch of folks who uh, have said that coincidentally they did need paving uh, jobs. And I had one email from a fellow who said, well, I don't need a paving job, Joe, but I want to appreciate them. I said, well, when you do, and there, that will come a time, because in Virginia we can go from 80 degrees to 30 degrees, from 60 degrees to zero degrees in a couple of days, and that can't be good for the blacktop. Uh, so wherever it is, you have a parking lot, something like that, to give them a jingle. I'm not, not sure of the scope of all the drawer, uh, driveways and paving options, but get with them. Pyramid Paving in Troy, Virginia. You can also email JT in the morning radio at gmail.com. Sadly to say, there were 70 other people using JT in the morning as their Gmail handle. Who are you people? Why are you using my show name? Maybe they're all tribute bands. I don't know. But uh, let's go back. No soldier shall, says the Third Amendment, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner. And I've brought this up regarding what we've learned. Elon Musk, say what you will, when he took over Twitter, found the FBI was doing the same thing with Twitter that the Chinese Communist Party was doing through ByteDance at TikTok, regulating and manipulating what you saw. And collecting the data. Oh, we're told it's just metadata. And we're told that it's only the... Only the people who have had interactions with people who have had interactions with people that we have on a bad guy list. Well, you heard Matt Gates say it just there a moment ago. They've, they've broken the law 38,000 times a day, it's, or 38 times an hour, he said, some crazy amount of times that they violated that own procedure. But here, here is where I, I draw my definitions on the Third Amendment. There were no such things as Central Intelligence Agency officers. If you were spying for George Washington, you were a soldier in his army. The whole TV show that was filmed in Richmond, Turn, was all about uh, these, these soldiers of the revolution that were working covertly to get information out of New York for General Washington. But they were officers. They were soldiers. So under the Third Amendment, the definition soldier, I think, includes FBI. I don't, and honestly, I don't think the Constitution envisioned a Federal Bureau of Investigation or that kind of thing, mainly because the Attorney General under the Constitution was tasked with reviewing proposed legislation to advise Congress regarding its constitutionality and the president. So if the president got some, you know, bill from Congress and he's looking at it, said, well, well, what do you make of this, Bob? And then Bob would look at it and say, it's not constitutional, Mr. President. Well, I'm going to veto it then. So the the whole idea of uh, whether or not you had the the... FBI in the first place, but again, soldiers of the federal government. That's where I go with the, the point on the Third Amendment is if they are surveilling you via your social media activity, and we have instances where they've gone to your bank, Bank of America, and no, by its name, it is not actually the Bank of America, although I'm sure there are people in the administration that would just like to get it over with just nationalize all these things, all this patty cake with the with independent businesses. <laughs> so they they had soldiers stationed in your house. They probably technically have soldiers stationed in your house right now saying, huh, they're on YouTube pretty early this morning. What is who's that guy? Is it is that Glenn Beck? No, he's too skinny. So they, they can do that, and they can do it algorithmically as well. I've already accumulated two strikes in the YouTube baseball game. 
mostly for yelling, I, I, yelling ivermectin in a crowded theater. But that's really at what's the issue of this Pfizer reauthorization. Isn't the 54 patty cake reforms that were in the legislation that failed yesterday, uh, but, and Congressman Good will be on this show at 7.45 tomorrow morning. I'm hoping Ben Klein joins us as well, because he's been busy with the Mayorkas impeachment as well. But the last time we uh, spoke with Congressman Good on the subject, uh, this is uh, what he uh, told us uh, back on March 15th, we were talking about, mainly we were talking about bite dance and banning TikTok, which I also don't think was a good idea, and you can weigh in on that as well, because the TikTok ban is, as Thomas Massey has said, a Trojan horse, because it gives the government authority to ban YouTube if you wanted to, or or even within it, uh, Joe Thomas and the Morning Podcast, if they were so. Sort of, but anyway, this is um, me and Congressman Bob Good. Uh, the caller that was on just before us was saying, well, how are they allowed to do this? I think it's because I think we have our hands in the cookie jar doing the same things uh, at Facebook and Twitter. Does that need to be um, you reined in as well, no. our, our, our surveillance abilities? Yes, but, but to clarify just for a moment on on. Bite dance TikTok and this issue specifically, then to come back to the other that you're raising. Again, this is not a ban. This is saying, hey, they've got to divest. Uh, CCP has to divest their ownership interest in it, and we're not going to allow a communist, uh, Chinese Communist yeah. Party to have access to this information, this data, if you will, or this controlling interest. Uh, so, uh, and, and there's been a orchestrated, expensive campaign, as you know, to manipulate the, the political apparatus in, in Washington in favor of. TikTok and Byte Dance, of course. Mm -hmm. You've seen the millions of dollars of TV ads that have run. I, I've gotten visit at my office from those advocating for Byte Dance and TikTok. Uh, you you had the uh, you may have heard this, but uh, TikTok put in a feature on the eve of the vote to where the users couldn't access the the app, the app without calling their member of Congress. It, it blocked wow. them until they clicked the thing that said put in your zip code and automatically dialed the member of Congress. Now, of course, they couldn't control what they said. They could just hang up the phone or they could say, hey, TikTok made me call you or whatever they want to say. But that just shows the control that they have and that we don't want uh, the Chinese Communist Party to have access to this. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, as it relates to big tech, you know, I am on the side of uh, reigning in big tech, confronting big tech, and uh, breaking up the monopoly power that they have, and certainly the ability that uh, they have to suppress information whether it's political viewpoints, whether it's medical information that we might want during a, a, a virus situation. Uh, and I also am in favor of inhibiting the ability of the uh, federal government to coerce or to uh, pressure uh, big tech to suppress information. That's even worse when it's coming from the Biden administration, as it has. And the Biden administration is – there's a case right now before the Supreme Court, as, as I'm sure you well know, many listeners know, uh, where the Supreme Court will decide about the federal government's ability to work with big tech to mm -hmm. suppress and control mm -hmm. information. And so that, well, I'm hopeful the Supreme Court will rule appropriately and, and greatly restrict it and hopefully eliminate the ability for, for the federal government to do that. Uh, well, and, and so that was uh, Congressman Bob Good from a couple of weeks ago uh, back in the old days. Uh, and you may have heard him talk about that, but he mentioned something, and I think it's important to mention this, and this is where this becomes a bipartisan issue, is that it feeds this narrative of the elected monarchy that we feel like we're living under. This is why we see the highest voter turnout be for the presidential elections. Well, 60% of us at least had better come out to pick who the new king is. with the cabinet-level knights of the round table, each with their own police departments and court systems. And so <clears throat> within that, this is, this is about reining that in. So if you're a Democrat and you don't want Donald Trump to get elected president because you're afraid of the things Donald Trump would do, or Ted Cruz, or Ron DeSantis, or Glenn Youngkin. Well, the same is true the other way around. And this is one of the problems we have in our 
current fixation with democracy is we can never see it from the other side. I don't think this is something our kids should be taught from a very young age. Look at it from the other side. Forensics and debating aren't taught in school anymore. And the first thing they teach you if you take debate is think about what the other person is going to say, do, want. And this, this comes into interviewing for a job or interviewing somebody to work for you. What do they want? What do you want? How does that mesh? How do you get it to mesh? Or how do you debunk everything altogether? My wife is watching a documentary on uh, the making of the movie My Cousin Vinny. And apparently, she learns from this documentary that there are law schools that bring that do an entire arc on Vincent LaGuardia Gambini's interrogation of witnesses in the case as to uh, being a primer in law school. So you know, imagine Vincent LaGuardia Gambini, who had a public uh, a community college law degree, is now the source material for uh, Harvard lawyers and other defense attorneys being taught how to uh, break apart the argument regarding uh, eyewitness testimony, supposedly. Anyway, we'll get back into all that coming up, uh, plus lots of other things, the shooting on I-64, details on that uh, as well. Philip Van Cleve from the Virginia Citizens Defense League, though, next on Joe Thomas in the Morning. Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with daytime highs in the upper 60s and breezy southeasterly winds. Thursday night showers may be a thunderstorm before midnight, lows in the mid 50s with breezy southerly winds. Friday, scattered showers mainly in the afternoon, partly sunny and 67, breezy southwesterly winds again. By Friday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 48 with breezy westerly winds, sunny and near 70 on Saturday. From BlueRidgeLife.com, I'm forecaster Tommy Stafford on Joe Thomas in the morning. And uh, last week, it was a lot of the firearm regulations. So joining us is the great Philip Van Cleve of the Virginia Citizens Defense League. How are you doing this week, Philip? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about you, Joe? I'm doing uh, as well as can be expected in a transitionary period, but I appreciate the folks who who enjoyed a repeat performance of our show last week, and we're back on the beam uh, this week for the Virginia Institute. And by the way, you can learn more about us at virginiainstitute.org. And one of the neat things is going to our Tuesday morning group coalition meetings, where often Philip will uh, be there. So, Philip, the governor signed some things into law. He amended some things that we probably all hoped would he, he would have vetoed uh, regarding firearms and firearms possession. Uh, so from the Virginia Citizens Defense League, how did you view the uh, all too predictable outcome of the General Assembly session, but then also the governor's uh, vetoes and lacks, uh, lack of in some cases? Okay, well, actually, the last, very last minute, he signed the bill that we were supporting, and that's one they give a tax break if you wish to take one, to, if you're buying a safe or anything to secure a firearm, mm -hmm. you have the option, if you wish, of getting a tax break. He signed that. We're fine with that. Um, yeah, he, he modified seven bills, um, and the modifications uh, were... We're kind of neutral on it. Um, if he wanted to turn around and veto those bills, we'd be just as fine with that as well. But he kind of took the uh, the major concerns out of the bills, and I think a few of them the Democrats are going to kill because they're not going to accept his amendments. Oh, I see. And, so, uh, but like for example, uh, there was one where the parental notification, a reminder once the school year mm -hmm. about parents being careful with their firearms that their kids don't uh, have access, like. And you know, explaining the gun laws on this and so forth. But uh, the governor said, "Well, if we're going to do that, let's also talk about um, 
all the drugs and truancy and uh, um, uh, sexual exploitation and all kinds of other things. You know, so I don't know what the Democrats are going to do with that, but they uh, they may not agree with any of that other stuff. Well, I guess, yeah, you're right, calling their bluff on some of their more you know, radical positions and, and saying, fine, if it's good for the goose, which has often been our case, Philip, is, is they have a hypocritical view of firearm legislation when it comes to then uh, ignoring fentanyl distribution, for example, which claims far more Virginia kids' lives. Well, not only that. There was there were some Republican bills that would have given um, a 10-year mandatory minimum to, to a violent criminal on his second conviction or third mm -hmm. conviction. Get them off our streets for at least 10 years because they've proven that they're predators and they're dangerous. The Democrats didn't want to touch that. Mm -hmm. Instead, the bills that the governor vetoed came after people like you and me. Right. I've never been arrested or charged with anything. I've had one speeding ticket. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, and they, but that's I'm and you are the people he all the Democrats aimed the bills at. And mm -hmm. they ignored the criminals. In fact, they they killed bills that would have made criminals pun, made punish criminals harder. Well, what so about some the, of the things they go ahead. Well, the, one of the bills that was very curious and, and predictable to me was this this privacy bill that would have allowed local law enforcement, and I presume the Virginia State Police as well, to randomly, uh, without any other sort of reasoning except that you're on a list of gun owners, come to your house and with no warrant or any sort of concern, say, we're here to check your firearm storage uh, because we know you have them and we, we now have the this right through you being on the list. Um, these are the kind of things that uh, I was glad to see the governor wasn't letting through. Yeah, I mean, we had all kinds of stuff. Uh, the assault, the quote unquote assault weapon ban. It's mm. a semi-automatic firearm. Uh, by the way, the, what they want to ban is the most popular rifle in America with 30, 40 million of these things being sold. Yep. The Supreme Court's already said that's a no-go. You cannot ban popular in use, commonly in use firearms, mm -hmm. but they tried it anyhow. Um, they also didn't <clears throat> want you open carrying such a firearm in public, but they didn't. They didn't want you to conceal a firearm in right. a restaurant. <laughs> so where, where's the middle ground on that? <laughs> you know, there is none, and they don't. They don't want one. They they just don't want us to have guns. Mm -hmm. Well, so, is it um, is it um... Is it firearms virtue signaling, Philip? Is it just being able to pander to a group or two to say, hey, we tried and, and make it a gubernatorial issue in 2025? I believe that's a lot of what it is. It's politics. But the problem, Joe, is they're playing politics with our rights, a very yeah. basic civil right. Um, and they should never be doing that. But that's that's what a lot of this was. Sure, I think they figured that this a lot of this stuff would be a sacrificial lamb. But the fact that they passed this stuff, the fact that this would be like if a, if um, a party decided they wanted slavery again, mm -hmm. and we're putting through all kinds of bills and voting them through that supported slavery again, knowing that it would be vetoed or was unconstitutional. Nobody would appreciate that. Nobody would think you should politicize anything of that nature. But this is exactly what the Democrats did. They wanted to make it harder for somebody like you and me to get a concealed carry permit. We have zero problems with permit holders, but oh no, we got to make it harder. We got to make them get fingerprinted, something that the state police said we don't need to do uh, 14 years ago. They want to make it harder to buy a gun. Uh, again, people like you and me, I'm not talking about criminals. They don't care about criminals. Mm -hmm. they, they're coming after you and me. And that's, uh, it's beyond disgusting. And the worst thing is every Democrat, they were a bunch of lemmings marching in line. Every single, every single gun bill, it's anti-gun, they voted for. Even when their own attorney in the Senate, they asked their attorney, well, would this bill be viewed as unconstitutional? Mm. And the attorney said, based on what's happened in other states, yes, this would this likely to be viewed unconstitutional. Okay, then they passed it anyhow. Why did they Not. ask him if they didn't want to know? We've right. got all this on video. <laughs> well, and, and talk about you know the the 
use of this and, and a lot of news coverage is being made of of how this seem to be still the the go home to mommy position for progressives and and yet they as we talked about earlier ignore things like fentanyl and uh, you know, thank goodness somehow Mark Obenshain got the bill through to at least punish the people that manufacture the damn stuff. Um, but but I guess it's it's a tightrope you walk because uh, a friend of mine said that the fentanyl bill might become precedential to go after gun manufacturers if if we're not careful in how these things are worded. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Well, again. The bottom line for everybody is if this seems weird to you that they're they're not interested in punishing criminals, but punishing you and I, Joe, and, and your audience, mm -hmm. it's because again, you have to stay focused. The, the what they want to do is they want to they want civilian disarmament. They don't want you to have guns. And so that that's the focus. And everything they did fits that pattern beautifully. All the bills they passed were aimed at making it so that you and I finally go, you know. It's just too hard to own a gun. There's yep. too much stuff. That's the goal. And don't mm -hmm. think it's about crime. And, and, and I know we often end up getting sucked into that. Well, you know, where, where we have uh, more gun rights is less crime. But they don't care about that. In the end, crime, they like crime because it's their excuse to disarm us. Even mm -hmm. though the crime isn't being happened. When was the last time you had a murder in your neighborhood? I can't think of when we've had anything around where I am. This, these murders are happening in a certain part of our certain cities, yeah. very predictable areas, every night on the news, it's going to be guilt in court in Richmond or, or you know a few other places. It's usually gang-related. It's mm -hmm. one gangbanger killing yep. another. Um, and yeah, oh, we've got this crime thing. Yeah, the crime is focused, and it's focused mostly in, in areas where it deals with poverty, it deals with drugs, it deals with all other kinds of mm -hmm. illegal activity. We don't have a general crime problem when it comes to murder. Uh, oh, but no, they and want that's, you to believe that. Well, and they—that's why they leave. They they conveniently parse the coverages of these stories to make it seem like there's just this random. You didn't even bring up the fact that uh, at least half of the participants in these shootings are not legal citizens of the United States now as they start working for these drug gangs and start uh, pushing the fentanyl and, and anything else that they're dealing in. And it is turf battles. It's it's battles over that. But they're also, I mean, you know, the fact that they'll demagogue you and me, Philip, and, and firearms owners because we're protecting the children. Yet, when you start talking about some of these things, as you said, the governor is saying, well, if we're going to talk about gun ownership in the schools and want kids kept protected, let's talk about drugs and, and the use of these things. Uh, I, I, there was a spate about six months ago where kids were getting sick in middle schools because they got in, uh, uh, got into their bags of uh, THC gummies that parents had left unattended, yet not a single person wanted the state police to be able to come into your home if you were, were given permission to own THC gummies just to make sure that you were safely storing them. Way more kids were in danger of those things uh, in the past year than there have been at firearms. It's not about public safety. Again, it's not. It's about disarming us. Mm -hmm. Public safety is their excuse. And I, there was somebody that posted a meme uh, on Twitter that said, my my right to life is an inalienable right. And it said, your, your right to own guns can be regulated or something. I said, no. I responded to that. I said, no. The right to keep and bear arms is also an inalienable right. I said, but the two aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, exactly. the two are tied together. Mm-hmm. They're, they're tied together very tightly. Well, and and your right to defend yourself, and, and you and I have said this before, one of my favorite things to point out to these zealots is the one word that doesn't appear in the Second Amendment anywhere is firearm. I mean, if, I, if I'm skilled enough with a claymore, which, you know, my arms, my upper body strength may not be quite there for, but if I want to carry a broadsword, I should be able to because that's how I choose to defend myself. It is about your ability to defend yourself. And, and uh, we watch this time and time again. One of the things that a lot of uh, listeners asked me about uh, regarding the governor's actions is this auto seer 
uh, regulation regarding the amend the, the 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 auto sear that you could put onto a weapon. Where does the Virginia Citizens Defense League on his uh, actions there? He signed that one uh, into as HB uh, twenty two and two ten, I think. Yeah, we 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 uh, pointed out there we were first we were opposed to it because it misquoted the federal law that you can legally own an auto sear. Mm -hmm. But most of them are unlawfully owned. They they were made in China and shipped over here. You can only own an, own an auto sear that was made before 1986. Okay. But there are legal ones out there under federal law. And they originally misquoted the federal law, and it basically made all of them illegal, even if you own one of these things. So they fixed that. So we went to neutral because all it did was restate federal law at the local level. In fact, our attorney said, well, sometimes it you might be better off being prosecuted in the state as opposed to federally over such a thing. Sure. So we went ahead and just went neutral on it. So the governor signing it, uh, we we were uh, we were okay with that. We we you know if you'd have vetoed it, we'd have been okay. If he signed it, we were okay. Um, BCDL does have a, a political action committee. Go ahead, Philip. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do. We do. Well, we do. That we have political action. We have uh, we now have have a C three that we'll be announcing where people can contribute money and be able to write it off on their taxes and that money will be used to fund lawsuits. Okay. We, we've sued the city of Winchester. We've sued the city of Roanoke. We want to do more of those lawsuits and we're winning those. So, well, and that's uh, one of so those we, things where the process is the punishment because they enact laws and then say, "Go ahead, smart guy, go go through court and get try to get you know enough time." Uh, that the, they they smugly will do that uh, anyway. Go ahead, Philip. Yeah, they do, but um, we're we're uh, but that's one way we can roll back a lot of the damage that was done in 2020 mm -hmm. uh, when they had a tri the Democrats had a trifecta, um, oh and yeah. that would be through the court. So that way we can get things done when we couldn't legislatively. What about the mid the 2024? congressional election certainly you know it's all pretty laid out now who the presidential contenders are going to be uh but has the vcdl political wing weighed in or are you going to be into the congressional races uh the senate races are you going to stay out of those primaries that uh, i think may 4th we start voting in in our 45 days of early election silliness yeah, well, uh, generally, well, with federal elections, we don't uh, endorse. The PAC doesn't endorse. It's only statewide and local level. Okay. Uh, but we, the VCDL, my part, the C4, will survey the candidates, and then we'll rate the candidates based on how they answered the survey. That way you kind of know um, if you're, hmm. where a person's positions are on guns. Um, I must say that I'm, I'm – uh, I wish I, I wish I was more related with with Trump, only because he brought us gun control. He brought us uh, the uh, the bump uh, the uh, the bump stock ban. Right. And he he was pushing red flag. He said, "Well, let's uh, let's do the take the guns first, and then do the due process." If I ever meet him, I would say, "So you would have wanted them to throw you in jail right away." And then later on, decide if you actually right. broke the law. Is that what you're you're saying would be okay with you? Yeah, let's uh, see. Uh, other... You know, FISA warrants. Uh, you know, and and gun ownership uh, there. No, it is true. And and this is uh, where you know his stand earlier this week on uh, abortion, saying it should be a state's issue. He needs to take that with him on a lot of issues, right, Philip? Yes. Yes. He needs to. I really, his big mistake there was he didn't have any grassroots organizations tell, talking to him, communicating with him about gun rights. Instead, he was counting on the NRA. And that's okay to have them in the mix, but you need to have people with boots on the ground, right? you know, somebody like VCDL or some other organization like that. Because we would have told him right away, do not touch bump stocks. They're not machine guns. Mm -hmm. You can't wave a wand and make them one, and you don't want to wave that wand. He waved it, and now... Uh, organizations across the country have spent fortunes on legal stuff trying to overturn that. And, and even the arm brace, which was the same thing. The, the, the BATS said, oh, well, if we can just sort of make law and don't have to bother with Congress, let's uh, let's fix up these, these uh, uh, arm brace things and we'll make those illegal. Well, you bring up another uh, subject matter that's on a grand or abstract is the presidential, these, these cabinet level 
posts that can legislate with, you know, the power of the General Assembly. Uh, that was one of the problems I had with uh, the, the president and his uh, view uh, with the governor and his uh, act on the uh, on the uh, you know, the. Uh, prescription drug policy, this was going to be a non-governmental agency, or or as they call it in England, a quago, a quasi-government agency, I guess, funded by the government, but not beholden to the government to regulate pharmaceuticals. But we're watching the same thing happen uh, at the federal level in these cabinet offices who are just saying, ah, the, the Congress says this is what we should do, and we can just kind of write this stuff in between that'll, that have that has the force of law, Philip. And like you were saying, they're kind of saying, yeah, we'll go ahead and take it to the courts. Yeah. You know, good, good look, luck how, long, with look how, how long have we been in the courts now? When did when did that um, a, a bump stock ban go into effect? Was that three years ago? Or I more? think so. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe right. four. We're, we still haven't resolved it. We're close. But that's how long that's been in effect. So sure. they, could, they do this stuff. It's, it's immoral in my eyes to do something that you know is unconstitutional and isn't you don't have the power to do people who do that should be lose the job well it's funny I, I was talking to a friend of mine who said you know that constitutionally the original job of the attorney general was to go to congress look over legislation and then advise them as to whether it was constitutional or not he wasn't a the you know the nation's top cop or anything like that it was uh, right right <laughs> Well, and our attorney general should be doing the same thing, but they didn't care. We pointed out all these unconstitutional bills to the Democrats, and they yawned, and they everyone they all voted for it. It doesn't matter that it's unconstitutional. And um, I, I mentioned that gun control really hurts minorities more than anybody because that's mm -hmm. where it's highly policed. Yep. And then uh, one one of the uh, black Democrat ladies. Uh, Gave me a lecture on how well since I'm white, what how, who am I to talk about? So I have no ability to have empathy. It's it's impossible for me to imagine uh, anybody else's plight. Um, she was about as racist as you can get. It's well, it's thing. it's funny. It seems like she's in favor of redlining then, because then we'll just keep the black communities in this neighborhood. I think we had that in the '60s, Philip. Yeah, me. we did. Yes, yes. It's uh, it's all crazy and upside down. Let me ask you this before we finish up, Philip. Uh, I know it's getting into summer season and the temperature is changing. Talk about uh, the summer season of, of uh, shows, gun shows, and, and opportunities. And maybe do you guys need more volunteers to help man some of the tables? Because I know you're all over the place. Yeah, we, we've got gun shows come every month. We've got multiple gun shows around the state. And um, if you sign up for our free email alert system, VA Alert, um, you'll uh, you'll be informed where we need help and so forth. Um, so that would be, and plus you'll know what's going, there's something going on all the time, even though the General Assembly is in session, our rights are under attack, there's court's decisions that you need to know are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, during the summer, um, we're uh, going to be busy uh, with lawsuits, um, and um, we, um, uh, we're going to be working on a, a variety of, of things that we can get done during the off season. And um, so again, if you're on VA alert, um, no. you can uh, can keep up with, with that. One of the things we want to do is we're trying to lo lower CHP, concealed handgun permit fees across the state. Those places that are charging 50 bucks are basically ripping you off. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're going to all those localities and we're going to get people involved and get them to drop it down. A lot of them now have gone down to $15, which is as low sure. as they can go. <clears throat> and well, I, uh, that's going to be a pro summer project. I know I live in Fluvanna County now, and I'm and I'm torn because I want to I want to keep my CHP, which says City of Charlottesville on it, because I feel like I own <laughs> a, a unicorn. It's like, hold it, that was where was that issued? Where? Uh, but Philip, uh, again, give it's vcdl.org, correct? Yes, vcdl.org is the website. We have a Facebook presence. We've got YouTube. Uh, we're a lot, a lot, most of the social media. Uh, I, I run the part on Twitter, on X, mm -hmm. uh, VCDL underline ORG right there if you want to follow. Well, it's going to be a busy summer and with a, such a, a closely divided house, you know, you want to make sure all the conservatives and maybe even a couple of Democrats from conservative areas uh, keep in mind how important these things are, because one vote here, one vote there can be a big problem. Right, Phil? 
Absolutely. Uh, and if we if we don't have a good governor and they and they, we end up with a tri a bad trifecta, mm -hmm. things could be really very bad. So gun owners, you better you better be voting. Yeah. No excuses. You need to vote. Um, and you need to be involved because uh, that you that's be you know, Phillips Phillips uh, VA alerts are a great way to stay ahead of this stuff. Philip, it's joy catching up with you uh, as spring dawns here in Central Virginia. Uh, thank you again for your insights and uh, as always your leadership at VCDL. Oh, and by the way, we'll be in Charlottesville at the Ravana Rifle and Pistol having a meeting at seven p.m. this Tuesday. Oh, okay, Ravana very good. Rifle very and Pistol good. Club out in Charlottesville. We don't do hey. one there very often. And make sure you stay tuned because our new flagship station is going to be in Stanton, Waynesboro, and Harrisonburg. And I know that you're you're at the Fishersville Expo Center frequently uh, there for events as well. So don't lose our number, Phil. Oh, good. Cool. Yes, sir. Well Thomas in the morning. Thank you for letting us do what we do every day and again supporting folks like our sponsors and more to come uh, and the support in the business community for what we do um, has been touching. Uh, remind me, I want to I want to reach out in in all this uh, to Commonwealth's attorney in Charlottesville, Joe Platania, who took quite a hit uh, because he admitted publicly he used to listen to what we did when we had a radio station. Hopefully he's still out there uh, for it. Because I think at the end of the day, and I think it's indicative of something, whether it's Second Amendment, uh, right to defend yourself, privacy rights, FISA, I think we can find a commonality of places. And, and what we're looking, and I think what becomes the biggest problem, is what is the outcome of uh, public policy. And I think if you break it down and you sit there and you say, okay, the more we've done, the worse it's become. Maybe we can start having the case for let's do less. Uh, there, there, there's an old expression in racing. you got to slow down to go faster, meaning your lap times might actually go up if you don't go hell-bent for leather into the corner every time and have to slam on the brakes to get, you know, Martinsville is a great example of a track like that where if you don't, mash it all the way down the front stretch. You don't have to slam on the brakes as hard uh, into the corners uh, and uh, and actually your lap times go up. And I think as a society, we need to learn a lesson uh, from that, that idea that if you go slower in some spots, you go faster in others. And on the uh, subject of guns, let's let's jump into the situation that gripped everyone uh, in central Virginia, the the shooting in Waynesboro that started in Waynesboro and then wound up uh, basically shutting down I-64 at the top of Afton Mountain. I believe the uh, suspect is in custody undergoing medical treatment for, for life-threatening wounds at the end of it. An ear witness told uh, Blue Ridge Life magazine that uh, they had heard seven shots uh, towards the end of the event, but it wasn't the end of the event as far as those who were trying to drive across the, the interstate were concerned. There were still hours and hours of work to be done uh, in that uh, instance. So we'll get into what, you know, what precipitated it, 
what happened uh, and go from there. Your comments as well, JT in the morning radio at gmail.com or 434 882-4217. If you call that number, you can leave a voicemail. Uh, you can also do this, and uh, I was going back over some old tapes of how uh, Rick Edelman used to do this. If you just record into your voice recorder, and somebody said this happened to them the other day, they called and left a voicemail and then couldn't get the YouTube app to reconnect. I, I've talked to folks who watch the entire program, so I, it's not on our end this time. Believe me, there are plenty of instances where technological issues are on us. But uh, if you want to just record something into your uh, voice recorder and then send it to us as well, uh, to uh, JT in the morning radio at gmail.com, we'll get into that. Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with daytime highs in the upper 60s and breezy southeasterly winds. Thursday night showers may be a thunderstorm before midnight, lows in the mid-50s with breezy southerly winds. Friday, scattered showers mainly in the afternoon, partly sunny and 67, breezy southwesterly winds again. By Friday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 48 with breezy westerly winds, sunny and near 70 on Saturday. From BlueRidgeLife.com, I'm forecaster Tommy Stafford on Joe Thomas in the morning. Joe Thomas in the morning, and again, the uh, phone number is 434-882-4217, or if you want, you can record something, a comment or something. Maybe you have something you want to say about Philip Van Cleve and our interview uh, regarding vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Virginia Citizens Defense League versus the National Rifle Association uh, as well. You can send those into JT in the morning radio at gmail.com. I was pleased when we chose that email address that I didn't have a series of people to get in line behind as I did when I first petitioned Gmail for JT in the morning. It's been the name of our radio program, Joe Thomas in the morning for 17 year, years just in Virginia. Uh, and it's been the name of my program, uh, well, since I started doing mornings in uh, Hyannis. Massachusetts in 1993, 94. So we're coming on, you know, 20, 30 years of, of the same name for the same show. It's the one thing I don't forget. Uh, but it was amazing to me how many people had JT in the morning as their Gmail handle before I got there. Now I'm, I'm kind of used to this because if you search on Google, Joe Thomas, you're going to find an awful lot about Hall of Fame offensive linemen from Cleveland and a couple of R&B singers. And then about page four, sometimes page three, you'll get to stories about me. Uh, but enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? But you can send uh, to that email address uh, if you just record something into your voice recorder and we'll play it back uh, on the air and uh, get into your comments and your thoughts on Philip. But let's get back into the uh, standoff on I-64. Certainly most of the people were impacted by it uh, because of the interstate being closed uh, starting at about 6 p.m. I think it was about 6 p.m. Uh, state police culminated a car chase that began in Waynesboro. And it began about 5.20 on uh, Wednesday afternoon with a shooting that occurred uh, in, in Waynesboro at um, the Parkway Village Apartments in the Z building at Parkway Village Apartments. A 20-year-old male was shot there. Police officers saw a Lincoln... MKZ of the suspect leaving the scene and they began a pursuit there at the uh, at the Parkway Village Apartments that 
pursuit went through the city and wound up on Interstate 64 eastbound. They went along Delphine Avenue, up Main Street, and then finally crashed into a guardrail on the interstate, it looks like, from the, the footage, and we posted it on uh, both of our Facebook pages, Seville Joe Thomas and the new uh, WTON Radio Facebook page. Uh, there's footage from Spotacop where it appears the rear bumper of this Lincoln MKZ has been bumped a few times. I'm not sure if Dale Earnhardt Sr. was around or at least inspiring one of the drivers, but you know, they, one of the things they teach law enforcement officers in pursuit training is how to get the car to stop running. Uh, so uh, the, then, then Albemarle County Police joined in, Waynesboro Police, all there in this standoff, along with Virginia State Police. Both directions on I-64 closed. Um, a bunch of folks on the eastbound side kind of trapped on the highway, stuck there because they couldn't get them off the highway. Uh, but then they started detouring people off both, I think, at mile marker 97 and... Um, and at uh, Crozet, where they had to kind of wind their way up through Rockfish Gap Turnpike on 250 across. And it slowed a lot of people uh, down. But uh, as one ear witness told Blue Ridge Life magazine, uh, they heard seven shots right at kind of the culmination of the standoff. And now the reports are uh, that the suspect in this shooting uh, is at University of Virginia Hospital with what they report as life-threatening wounds. So uh, I'm not sure where, when. We don't have any further uh, details on that. But they are asking that if anyone has any information, their Crime Stoppers line is 800. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, this was just updated. It's non-life-threatening injuries is what the assailant is at UVA Hospital with. So. Uh, at least uh, whatever the situation was that led to the original shooting in Waynesboro at the, um, what was it, the uh, Parkway Village Apartments. If you have any information that might shed light into this, they're hoping you can help them out uh, at 800-322. 2017 and you can call them and make a point on this. I bring this up in the light of our conversation about firearms and the firearm bills that Governor Yunkin vetoed or amended uh, drastically. And Philip Van Cleve with great insight on uh, in some of the amendments that are just not going to be tenable for the left of the Virginia General Assembly, so they will probably um, vote them down. These are, as Philip said and has said so many times, not about you and me. And these stories, when horrific, and you see the entirety of central Virginia snarled on the interstate because of gun violence, this isn't gun violence being perpetrated by people who you know, know and honor and respect their Second Amendment rights and learn how to defend themselves and that kind of thing. This is the thuggery that we unfortunately promote from where I sit when we start demonizing firearms. So you say guns are bad, well then only bad people have guns. And then you wind up with situations where the bad people say, well, it sure is a lot easier to run this neighborhood if I'm the only one with a firearm because I have an illegal one. And and all the virtue signaling that I called it, that the General Assembly does regarding assault weapons ban and things like that, is, and if you missed the interview we had with Philip, when the show is done, you'll be able to jump back to it on the playback. It's in the second half hour of uh, the first hour and uh, terrific visit, but it's virtue signaling. It is the ability to stand behind a podium in front of cameras just like this one and say, I'm going to do something about this so it never happens again. 
That is, if we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, is the best statement ever made in American history, the worst statement is, I will make sure this never happens again. And it's a lie from the get-go. And the podium jockeys that say this lie, it's, it's the ultimate, it's the, how does Chuck Schumer say it? It's the big lie. Well, the big lie isn't that there were election frauds going on in 2020, caused by and promulgated by COVID-19 restrictions. No, 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 that's not the big lie. The big lie is that some podium jockey, by you know, penning some series of bills, is going to stop us. Because it's not about gun violence. Specifically, it's not about the gun part of that world. It's about the violence. And I forget which particular instance it was, but Ted Nugent once used his YouTube channel. We should probably do the same thing with this one at some point. Um, put, put a rifle in a chair and started his live stream. And just let it run for days and days and days. Brother's got some serious bandwidth. And for days and days, this rifle sat in this rocking chair. And then Ted comes back and says, So, boys and girls, what kind of bad stuff has this gun done while it's been sitting there? And that's as tongue-in-cheek as that is. It's the point. There is violence that's being done with hammers. And where I grow up, the stickball bat was considered an assault weapon. It was actually the assault weapon of choice. If you worked or drove through bad neighborhoods, you kept a tire iron underneath your driver's seat of your car. Some people went even <clears throat> more extreme and started creating all sorts of truncheons out of chassis bolts and things like that so that they would have something in their car if they needed to defend themselves. And is it an assault? Again, go back to the strict definition of a word. Is it self-defense? And that's always the situation. And we're going to tie two more stories in here. Then Mac's going to join us and we can uh, weigh in on it. The Richmond shooting. Remember the high school graduation that was uh, interrupted by shootings is now being turned and is, is actually uh, being replayed as a self-defense case uh, where the shooter actually is saying that it, it was self-defense that he shot uh, the, the kid and his father at the graduation. The lawyer in the case, this is uh, the, the lawyer is getting all the attention in this case because his claim is that he didn't understand his client and that's why he, uh, he didn't give him the good representation and he, that he allowed him to fall prey to the plea deal that, that he had said, no, 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 you got to take this plea deal. But he got, the kid's saying, I didn't, I was defending myself. <clears throat> now, he may have been defending himself with an illegally owned firearm. And, <clears throat> and that may be the case where you know, he wasn't in legal possession of a firearm. And that becomes a debatable point. The other story that ties into this, <clears throat> pardon me, is there alum in here? <clears throat> it's like drink, drink fluid and get more dry. Not good. So the second story that goes with this is the charges that were filed against the assistant principal at... <clears throat> See, it's the green pollen. It's the green powder out there. It's one of the, you know, those first nights with a window open. <clears throat> there you go. So, you know, Walter Cronkite never had to do that, did he, Joe? So, um, you know, it's a story as Joe Thomas compares himself to Walter Cronkite. Have you ever heard such things? It, uh, the Richneck Elementary School assistant principal is now facing uh, charges from a grand jury report uh, alleging, and we'll get into the details of it, egregious ignorance regarding 
the dangers that this kid would possibly bring to school. And tell me, you know, obviously this is a little elementary school kid, not a high school kid like in Parkland, Florida. But tell me this isn't starting to smack of the same thing we heard in Parkland, Florida, where the assailant had been waving red flags, and I'll use that word intentionally, for years before the horrific events at Parkland and Stone and Douglas Elementary School and all these other places where shootings have happened and warning flags have been ignored, yet we're told by our General Assembly members that, no, no, give us more red flag legislation, and this time we'll make sure this never happens again.
Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with daytime highs in the upper 60s and breezy southeasterly winds. Thursday night showers may be a thunderstorm before midnight. Lows in the mid 50s with breezy southerly winds. Friday, scattered showers mainly in the afternoon. Partly sunny and 67. Breezy southwesterly winds again. By Friday night, mostly cloudy. A low of 48 with breezy westerly winds. Sunny and near 70 on Saturday. From BlueRidgeLife.com, I'm forecaster Tommy Stafford on Joe Thomas in the morning. Joe Thomas in the morning. Thank you for joining in with us. Uh, and uh, sometimes words are funny in the way that uh, they can be misnomers. Zoom sometimes not working very much like very fast. <laughs> but joining us now uh, from the uh, sports department of the Joe Thomas in the morning program to open his notebook to tell us what's in there is the great one, Mac McDonald. Uh, good morning, Mac. How are you doing, sir? We have a department. I love that. So I got to start. I got to start hiring people. I guess, Jeff. I want to start building that. You okay? Are we all right? I'm sorry. What was that? No, I was going to say, if we have a department, then I got to start recruiting. You know, just like John Calipari. <laughs> that's okay. Right. So if that's now, now, are you going to be one and done though? Because I have some yeah, people. Yeah. No. Uh, the 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 Calipari story is really interesting because he was welcomed like you know his initials are JC. Let's put it this way: it was like the real JC showed okay. up in uh, in Fayetteville. And uh, anyway, the 65 year old welcomed Hunter Urichek, as I told you yesterday, former Virginia. Uh, athletic department official was working in sports marketing and communications and and uh, went to Coastal Carolina, went to Houston, did wonderful things. And right now, John Calipari, who got hired, uh, he got a five year contract, seven million per year. Do the math. That's a thirty five million deal. Plus, I'm sure there's more. Ooh. His roster, his roster has one player, one player. What? I Whoever. think Virginia Tech has no, more players no, left than no. that. He had eight players, eight Arkansas players went to the portal. He had nine seniors on top of that. Oh. So he, he shows up. He said three guys came to the meeting when he said, <laughs> let's meet with the team. I mean, oh, this is – this is so, He has no high school commits, okay? And the roster player he has is a senior who averaged 0.3 points – Per game. Oh my so, goodness! So meanwhile, sitting in Lexington, the school he left, they have they have the second best recruiting class <laughs> in the country, and they're they in the same league. Top one hundreds. So Colin Perry, he was great. All right, he was great at the press conference yesterday. Can I play the soundbite? Yeah. Are we good for this? Yeah. Anyway, he uh, he talked to his uh, buddy, as I told you yesterday, John Tyson of Tyson Chicken, who uh, put the helped uh, <laughs> helped Hunter Urichek put the deal together. And uh, talking about a comfort level and the fact that you've got to have that administration support if you want to win championships. Basketball coaches win games. Administrations win championships. And you know why? Because they want to. And it's important to them. This program, you talk about some of the best jobs in the country. In basketball, this is one of them. We can say what we want. This is one of them. This is a state that I'm comfortable in. It's how I grew up. It's how he grew up, huh? You know, he's one of the great sales guys of all time. I mean, Isn't you know, he from like New Jersey? And he's saying that yeah. Arkansas is just like how he grew up. How do, they, how do the people in New Jersey feel about that? Since 2019, he's won one SEC title. He has not reached the second round in the last five years in the NCAA tournament. Okay, he did have a natty in 2012 all right we'll give him that so now 
if I can I play the second sound sure. bite? We good? Yep. okay, good. Because because he taught this was great. He talked to the writers about his roster because uh, one of the writers said, uh, "Excuse me, uh, Mr. Uh, Coach Calipari, can you tell us about your Arkansas roster and what you plan to do with the portal?" Great comment. Listen, I'm jacked about another opportunity. Like I'm like, let's go now. I met with the team. There is no team. Hunter's really <laughs> extremely confident, but we got to get a roster together. And some of it is a little bit of everything, but we will. <laughs> Good stuff. We <laughs> have no roster. It's everybody's a no walk team. on. We're holding tryouts. Yeah. So it's it's just um, you know college college hoops that it's. Uh, and uh -huh. it's freaking best. So anyway, it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. It, you know, I again, these are the story. And like I'm presenting this story to my class today. These are the stories that we want to bring to the table that I'm going to show. OK, class. All right. You guys, it's stand up day today. We learn how to do stand ups today. All right. Let's see what you can produce with this press conference. You attended. You've asked questions. All right. And these are guys who love wrestling and they love UFC fighting and whatever. They they know that really our students know very little about college basketball. Now that's not that's not that's a generality. A lot of our students just don't follow the the day to day. Like if I told them, you know, what Masters is this for Tiger? Mm -hmm. You know, how many years has he been there? They have no idea. You know, they know who Tiger Woods is, but they don't know any Masters history. If right. I ask them today, how many green jackets does Tiger have? They have no idea. What's a green jacket? Yeah. You know, that's the history. <laughs> that's the history that we have to try to. And by the way, I know you guys are getting rain today and uh, Augusta is getting drenched and uh, they got a lot of wind. Well, and so my azaleas are way behind theirs. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, and, and that's, you know, that's a that's a sidebar. When I first the Augusta National Women's Championship was played a few years ago, the mm -hmm. first one. OK, I don't even remember what year it was. And um, might have been 2021, something like that. So I take my, I get two tickets. I get in the lottery, a $50 ticket. I win the lottery. I get two tickets. So I told my wife, I said, all right, we'll plan a little Southern soiree. We'll go through Savannah, which she absolutely loved. Sure. Paula Dean became her next president. I mean, she absolutely <laughs> loved, loved, loved the South. Okay. We go to Augusta. We stay in this nice little place. Mm -hmm. All right. We go on the grounds, park the car, go on the grounds. And so her friend, it was like, Babe, aren't you? I haven't seen this place in a long time. I go, look at this. And she goes, doesn't where you play look like this? Oh, my gosh. I mean, oh. <laughs> my wife had never ridden in a golf cart. Okay, for you get golf carts, you don't need them. But it's, so we go, we walk the whole golf course. And we go up number one where azaleas are like playing uh, uh, behind number one green. The azalea. Well, you know what she did when we got home a week later? She goes to Lowe's. She's planting azaleas in our front yard. She nice. loves them so much. So, <laughs> Forget the golf, you know, forget that. But anyway, it was. Uh... Well, but that is, no, but that is one of the things about the Masters is, sure. is, is, is the reason they play it at the same golf course every year is this, Absolutely. this vista that I think a lot of golf courses aspire to. I mean, you and I have talked about, uh, you know, P.I. Yeah. and some of these folks mm -hmm. who design these courses. You know, it's it, it, it's curb appeal, if you want to put it in a realtor's uh, parlance. It is, you know, what do you feel like when you walk? up to the uh, tee box on the 18th green what do you feel like when you walk out to the first tee uh, you know th there are moments in nature because uh, uh, what is uh, who is the fellow that said golf is a walk in the woods ruined uh, oh a good one no uh, John Feinstein's book was a good walk spoiled <laughs> that's right right yeah yeah that was the book yeah and because uh, he and he wrote about the the Ryder Cup and trying to you know for these guys to try to qualify for like or Q school not Ryder Cup Q school and uh, uh but yeah a good walk spoiled was the name of the book and so so apropos but when you um again it's one of my favorite weeks and to be able to go there and just experience it is it's a hit you you cannot have a cell phone on the grounds. They have a kiosk where you turn your cell phone in, wow. and they give you a, they give you a, a rain check. I mean, they give you a, a hat check, a receipt. You can pick it up afterward. There there are no pictures to be taken. There are no cell phones on the grounds. Uh, people scurry. They get there early and they they plant their chairs where they're going to be later. And uh, and then last night, and I told you this yesterday. We talked about it, but I saw the interview last night with um, uh, Vern Lundquist, his 40th Masters, 
and Sean McManus is is walking away from CBS too, and and uh, you know as producer director. But Vern Lundquist had a couple of wonderful stories, and he you know he he talked about his top stories of all time, and of course the Jack Nicholas putt in '86. Um, you know, yes, sir. And so, you know, the, the hand in the air and whatever. And he got a selfie with Nicholas as they grabbed each other's hand and went, yes, sir. <laughs> and then of course the tiger, the tiger wedge oh, where yeah. he had no chance in 2005 with the Nike roll and a ball, you know, in your life, have you, you know, and he just, um, Vern, Vern is a, he's had some of the greatest calls ever. Sure. The, the field goal six against Alabama, the Auburn miracle, you know, they had a couple of miracles against Alabama and he's just had some iconic, iconic. And this is well, a guy who started in Dallas and was voice of the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, years ago, uh, it was great to go it, through his life. It, and I know you teach this at uh, the mm -hmm. Dan Patrick school at full sail university, but I mean, it's, it's, it's you have to be the grinder that you know is is there doing three yards in a cloud of dust when there are no stories there's got to be some content yeah. to create stuff but you also yeah. have to be ready for that moment when it comes you 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 can't listen to the people saying joe why would you go down to the corner of fourth and market street on august 12 2017 <laughs> well because yeah. in between all the three yards in a cloud of dust you have to be ready for the moments when they come as well so true I think. and uh, when no, so well said no so well said and we tell one of the things we feel at the school this school is a really good school and a really good training facility for the guys who graduate we have 150 guys we've placed the last four years we've placed 150 kids in wow. television businesses radio and television businesses good stuff and um but i mean so many of, but we try to teach them do you know what a journalist? I even bought journalist notebooks. I'm handing out today. I got <laughs> I'm, you know, I buy them on Amazon. They don't know what a what a reporter's notebook is. Sure, Why you're, are you're a sports notebooks? journalist, but the word journalist <laughs> has to be in there yeah. somewhere. I mean, you have why to are reporters well, notebook? Well, it's one of the reasons we have notebook tagged to this well, show. It, it, it has <laughs> anyone asked Calipari why? I mean, I get it. People, you know, come to me and you know talk about WTON that we're you know in the process sure. of purchasing, sure. and their first question is. Why? why? Why are you doing this, Joe? Uh, but, you know, why, why would Calipari do this? Is it just because he's, a, you know, an adrenaline junkie and he wants to the thrill of the build again? Um, uh, is, is, you know, just, oh, ho, hum, it's Kentucky? Uh, it, you know, at least unlike Rick Pitino, he's not riding off under the cloud of an NCAA investigation, or is he? But, I mean, these are the things. I'm not a sports journalist. Heck, I'm not even a journalist, but you have to have that innate Oh, curiosity. you are, though. No, 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 no. I disagree. Yeah, yeah, you are though. You can you do sto you do four hours worth of stories every morning. You are you look at sidebars, you look at storylines, don't you? You are. In my you know, you should be speaking to my class because a lot of times our kids don't understand what a journalist you know what they have to do as far as building their circle and I I I copied a story which I'm gonna show them today of the of the guy, the T young TV guy in Arkansas, who broke the Calipari story. He had never broken a national story before, and he wasn't even supposed to work. He went in on Sunday after church, stopped at Publix to get a sandwich, walked in and is eating in his cubicle. And then all of a sudden he gets a phone call. Oh, by the way, Arkansas just hired Calipari. Really? Well, that could be, you know, and then you have to follow it up. You don't know whether it's true. You don't know who you're getting the phone call from. I mean, you've got to be able to build your circle, yeah, sure. be able to make the call. Like, and so he was able, because he had the relationship with Hunter Urichak, who's the AD. Hunter, is this true? Hunter said, well, I can't confirm, but there'll be an announcement on Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, you have to be able you to, to you know, look at those things. So don't ever say to me, you are not a journalist. Well, no, I'm you not know, I'm, I'm metaphorically all. speaking, the cage full of monkeys. And I've just, you know, I understand. Now and then wrote well, Shakespeare. But, um, you know, but that's uh, so well said. <laughs> Uh, and thank you, sir. By the way, Chip Crable says, hey, I had a Hey, lunch. good. Yeah, yeah well, I'll be touching. He'll call me today. Chip will call me today from Stan for sure. So well, that's good. I appreciate good. it. And uh, you have All right, bud. for the coverage, and we'll be looking forward to it, uh, you know, as the Masters unfolds. Are they, they, when do they tee off today? Well, it's everything's been pushed back. They got a oh, they got, they got severe rain. rain, forty five mile an hour winds, and uh, so everything's been pushed back today. So you know, I don't I don't even know. Okay, I have no well, idea. But 
That's what we pay you the big bucks for. I know. There you go. I've been watching it for like, you know, for two days, you know, in and around everything else. But this weekend and tomorrow, tomorrow, Joe, a little tease. My first Virginia Tech spring game. That's What's the right. one the, You're coming with to the Blacksburg, one, the only Bud Foster. Oh, yes. I will be in I'll be in beautiful Southwest Virginia and I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. All right, good stuff. Thank all right, you, man. Sir. All right, man. Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with daytime highs in the upper 60s and breezy southeasterly winds. Thursday night showers may be a thunderstorm before midnight, lows in the mid 50s with breezy southerly winds. Friday, scattered showers mainly in the afternoon, partly sunny and 67, breezy southwesterly winds again. By Friday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 48 with breezy westerly winds, sunny and near 70 on Saturday. From BlueRidgeLife.com, I'm forecaster Tommy Stafford on Joe Thomas in the morning. Thank you for joining us and letting us do our thing uh, with you here on the YouTube land. Uh, just uh, and uh, you know, Mac was talking about networks and people you know and people you don't. Tomorrow, uh, I will play back uh, later this afternoon. I'm going to get to sit down with the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. No, not that one, Virginia Senator Mark Warner, because um, there was a story that uh, somebody asked me if I had seen anything about, it, and it is out there, and there is seemingly corroborating statements from uh, the NCL, the, the owner of the Dolly, the uh, freighter ship that crashed in and brought down the key bridge, uh, indicative of uh, the possibility that they were the victim of a cyber attack that caused them to lose all their navigability. That's the word you need to work on today. Say navigability. And I just did it twice, and I'm not trying again. But the, the story is, so uh, I, I asked, after scrambling to find her email address, his uh, press person, I said, Can I, and he's holding a little press thing today, so I'm going to get in there, and hopefully he, we get a chance to ask him and say, what do you know about this? And I, you know, it, that's not the only answer, but it is going to be an, an, an illuminative point, because what does he say about it? Does he say no? Now, remember, Mark is the same fellow who confronted with all of uh, John Podesta's emails in 2016 by me. Uh, I believe if you're watching us on this very same YouTube channel, go way back to 2016, you will find the video. We used to do a, a TV simulcast with Gray Television in Charlottesville. So when we covered the 2016 presidential conventions, we were at the Democratic National Convention, and Mark Warner was there. And I said, well, you know, what, what does your party do about this? And he jumped right into, well, it's Russia, it's China, and, and sort of the narrative picked up from there. So I'm not saying you'll definitely know all the answers about this possibility that uh, the Dolly had been cyber attacked. But let's see what he says first, uh, because that could mean a lot uh, towards... Uh, that we also uh, take your comments on anything we've been getting into at 434-882-4217 or you can uh, email uh, jt in the morning radio at gmail.com i just uh, i thought of this because um, there it is possible if you want uh, to just uh, if if you don't want to call maybe you're listening on your smartphone and uh, you just want to record something into voice memo, you can also send it uh, that way as well. Uh, and I think we've got uh, one here off of that line. Let's see who what they're reacting to. Uh, step one, step two, it's like shuffle dance. Uh, only I don't get as many clip click-throughs on the interwebs uh, for it. Uh, okay, here we go. Hey, Joe, it's Clark. So... On me not being able to get back onto the link the other day. Now that I've got subscriptions on both devices, 
if I go to subscriptions, I can get your feed. If I just put it on YouTube and search Joe Thomas in the morning, it tries to give me every podcast you've ever done and anything but the live feed. Okay. Now, putting that out on the show probably doesn't help sure it does. the people that, like me, are not very technologically savvy. But maybe if you put it on Facebook or something, uh, um, we they do. can get that straightened out. Because yeah, I'll do. bet you there's more people that want to listen we do than are listening right now. So. Anyway, keep doing what you're doing. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, but, you know, tech, you know, and that's on the fly. Uh, I was also told by two different people, this is controversial, you know, as as controversial as something can be like this, is that depending, you know, you can set your uh, YouTube channel to, you know, if you're doing a broadcast on YouTube, uh, do, do you have it set for, uh, is it okay for kids? And this is interesting because apparently YouTube doesn't, and maybe this is what Dr. Clark is getting caught by, is that if you if you say, sure, it's fine for kids, because I think what we're doing is fine for kids. I'm also the person that read Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy to my eight-year-old son as a bedtime story. So maybe my judgment should be questioned. I don't know. I don't. I think they've turned out to be pretty damn good adults, uh, if not a pain in the arse every now and then. But I don't think we're cussing or doing some of the other things that people do on YouTube because they you know, think it's a safe zone for it. So I, I was told that you know, put that in there and you won't be restricted in who can see it. But apparently you're also restricted in who can see it. Now, if you want to move us to Rumble, here's the problem. See, I need to get five followers. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to basically go to Rumble. Uh, JTITM is the channel is the is the and if you follow that if i get up to five then we can start doing this video uh live to rumble but we can't do it live to rumble i can't share it to rumble because rumble and youtube have this thing it's like burger king and mcdonald's so uh, oh and somebody who went to the new facebook page for wton radio and we were covering this uh, the standoff on i-64 there said said, knowing some of the news stories that have circulated around my uh, transition, let's just call it, um, uh, said, Joe, are the colors of your new station intentionally designed to be the colors of McDonald's? Not, not the case. They, they happen to be uh, two of the most eye-catching colors in the spectrum, but that's the only reason uh, for it here on that. On the subject of the shooting, that precipitated this. Uh, this email comes into JT in the morning radio at uh, gmail.com. Ken writes in, he says, Joe, there was also a homicide in Charlottesville. When are people going to start admitting that this is driven by illegal immigration and the drug policies of some of these communities? I, I can't, I cannot tell you it isn't because so much of this is as you say just curious two 20 somethings having a shootout uh, in, in the parkway apartments in waynesboro or anything like that and then you hear police chief michael Cotchis in charlottesville has said uh, clearly on occasion these are people settling beefs with firearms that's his phrasing and again, sometimes you you listen to that and you say, "Oh, what kind of beef would you settle with a firearm?" And and we have heard testimony that there are uh, parents in communities who are who are setting up neighborhood fight clubs amongst their young men and young women and saying, "Fight it out, fight it out." And certainly, a lot of martial arts devotees will say, "Yes, Joe, this is what." kids need to learn to do is to, you know, when, when need be, be able to defend yourself physically, not just with a firearm, not just with a stickball bat or anything else. Uh, certainly you would like to be able to defend yourself with your words, but sometimes that just doesn't uh, help. Um, again, it comes back into what is the backstop of it. 
and and there are people who have purchased firearms who have because they've purchased them and they've gone through the process have the the inclination to learn how to use them carefully not everybody has gone through i mean i have i have this crazy crazy ex you know army sniper guy who makes me do like tumble salts and he's like all right roll over six times jump up and then hit the target you know and stuff like that so it's not just can you hit the target can you be out of breath with your heart racing and your hands shaking and still hit the target I mean, those kind of things are the stuff I've gone through, uh, and it's. Uh, he he once he once said to me, he said, "You shoot like a girl." And I said, "Excuse me, Tom. What do you mean I shoot like a girl?" And again, cards and letters to JT in the morning radio at gmail dot com. He says, "You follow instructions." <laughs> I had to laugh. And guys, you could you could take the umbrage you want from it. But he, his point was that I listened to what he said and then executed what he showed me, uh, which apparently in the world of firearms training isn't always what uh, the guys do. Do we have the Nick Freitas? Uh, speaking of army, um, army snipers uh, there who now snipe on the interwebs. I want to get this Nick Freitas. Uh, he does these little snippets. And his most recent one is about a controversy. Um, yeah, there's Nick Freitas's feed. And I, do we just? I just want to get the video. And can we? And hopefully we can share uh, the video of it as well. Here, here it is. Um, all right. So, uh, to, uh, to uh, hang on to him for a moment here. Let's get it on the screen so everyone uh, can see what we're what we're talking about here. Because this is just a. It's it's a neat story um, and it shows again I think what my firearms instructor was talking about when he said so you shoot like a girl Joe and I said uh, well, how do you mean uh, Tom and he said uh, you follow my instructions and then you execute them uh, so this is uh, Nick Freitas's Twitter feed but I think it's also on on Instagram and other places uh, like that. So go back to it. Well, the Navy is currently being mocked because they put out a picture of a Navy officer shooting a rifle with the scope on backwards. And I, I think I know what happened here. I think uh, somewhere on that boat, a Marine told the uh, Naval officer that if you put the scope on backwards, you can shoot into the future. But uh, it's not true, guys. It's not true. Just just makes things look uh, farther away. Go Army. So, and, and the coffee mug is always a big part of Nick Freitas. If you follow him, uh, his, his handle on, uh, on uh, Twitter is at Nick Freitas. At Nick J. Freitas, okay. At Nick J. Freitas is how you can follow him on Twitter, X, whatever it's called uh, these days uh, there. But uh, again, you know, the, the firearm as a prop versus the firearm versus uh, as a defensive weapon. Uh, and when, when our own military face palms over this, and you know, one of my favorite expressions, <sighs> I love the smell of face palm in the morning. So we, we turn from that to the soldiers that are stationed in your house and uh, we have the uh, we have the story regarding the FISA bill. This was uh, early on into the uh, program. Uh, FISA r bill failed yesterday. House Freedom Caucus brought it down. This is Congressman Bob Good of Virginia's 5th District uh, talking about this with Matt Gates, Florida's 1st District Representative. I do want to get to this FISA press conference that you led. Um, this is very hot. It's upcoming in the next several weeks. Uh, you assembled a group of Republican conservatives who are, in a lot of ways, civil libertarians, people who believe in the Constitution. Um, just define the battle space on FISA for my viewers. Who's fighting for what? What do you think the key flashpoints are? Well, as you, as you know, uh, you had two competing bills, judiciary uh, has jurisdiction over this issue, and you had a bill come out of judiciary, which was a good bill. You had a bill come out of the Intelligence Committee, which is not a good bill, and didn't sufficiently uh, put the premium or the uh, the priority on protecting Americans' constitutional liberties. What they're putting the premium on is allowing the deep state to be able to do whatever they want to do in the name of keeping us safe. And so it ought to be the Judiciary Committee that has, has uh, priority here, and it should be the Judiciary Bill. There's two competing bills. 
Uh, but instead, unfortunately, there was compromise made, and the Intelligence Committee bill is the main text bill. But then we're supposed to be having four good amendments from the Judiciary Committee to try to make that bill as good as it can be. And we're in a battle right now in the conference because we were supposed to be voting on that bill today with those amendments. But the bottom line is uh, the Intelligence Committee, led by the Speaker, I'm sorry, the Chairman Mike Turner, essentially told the Speaker, hey, we're not going to vote. We're going to kill the rule and not allow the bill to come to the floor if you if you have votes on these amendments. These good so they, they and this is the interesting part of this. So Mike Turner is now claiming that what Bob Good did, which is vote against the rule, which in order to get legislation voted on in the House, first there has to be a rule that uh, determines how the votes will be cast and where the votes will be cast and all of those things. So that's what the House Freedom Caucus was able to block. And you say, oh, my gosh, Joe. Uh, this is like what we oh I could go to the paint drying channel and get this, but this is where the voice of the minority is protected. So, for example, the Virginia General Assembly, the Senate over the past two sessions has had a one seat majority for the Democratic Party, yet the committees that determine what bills are heard by the body at large are generally eight Democrats to three or four Republicans. And you say, well, well that's not fair. The body at large is, is barely 50-50. But that's how they set it up. And, and these are the places where liberty, where the voice of the minority and the voice of the individual are getting lost in these cases. And we went back, and, and I, I brought this up earlier in the program, on the uh, Fourth Amendment, yes, but also the Fifth Amendment, uh, pardon me, Third Amendment, which defends your right to not have soldiers in your, and I think this is a, an important thing that nobody else is really <clears throat> talking about because the, the phrase is so commonly overused, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. There are scary people out there willing to do scary things to you, and you need us to do these things. Uh, who's going to stand on this wall? Colonel, the fictitious Colonel Jessup asked uh, Lieutenant Caffey in the play A Few Good Men. Are you going to stand on this wall? You do need people standing on the wall. The problem is sometimes people are standing on the other side of the wall. And... The issue, I think, is being borne out in Gaza and in Ukraine because some of what's being debated is oversight over monies in Ukraine. But on a grander scale, war is criminal in, in many ways. War wreaks havoc into communities. War wreaks havoc into families. War should be avoided at all costs uh, up till the point of people's individual rights and freedoms being trampled over. And that being said, there are some simple things, and then I brought this up the other day. I mean, eight years the country existed. Eight years the country had existed, and, and this Third Amendment was in place for those eight years. And the president, for all those eight years, upon leaving office, warned us about the partisan factions that were tearing at the Congress already, and international entanglements that were drawing us into conflicts that we really didn't have a, a horse in. Eight years, it took us eight whole years to get to this place. It actually took less than that. Uh, the woman who famously asked Ben Franklin, what, what kind of country have you given us, sir? And he said uh, to her, uh, she was a big fundraiser in the Philadelphia area, helped Ben raise lots of money for the revolution. He said, a republic if you can keep it. But she is also famous as uh, having written some heartfelt plaintive letters to President Washington begging him to stay in office because he was ready to go. He was like, I, I don't want to deal with this. This is a guy they brought in the reason he became president is they brought him in because of the herd of feral cats that was 
trying to debate the U.S. Constitution, and somebody needed to marshal this herd, thus inventing the executive branch of the American government. But the Third Amendment, no soldier shall, in the time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by, war, by law. And this uh, was brought up to me the last time I got onto the soapbox of the Third Amendment and FISA and the Department of Homeland Security and NSA and all of this. You have consented. And this is an important thing because you have to understand and you have to be honest. I'm sure on page 735 on the software app that I'm using to produce this YouTube channel, there was a proviso that said uh, in some manner of phraseology or another that this software developer has the right to share your information or the information collected in the usage of this app with third parties at their discretion. They don't even say with the government or anything, with third parties. And part of this is used uh, when you, you start to get spam emails and things like that from advertisers who start advertising or sending you stuff because of your participation in something. But that is also the permission that the FISA folks and the, the surveillance committee will use. That and the fact that the judges that are supposed to be judging these things are rubber stamping 98% of the FISA applications when they get them anyway. Uh, as the Fourth Amendment says, no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons to be persons or things to be seized. So a judge gets a FISA application and says, uh, oh, hey, Bob, how's that, how's that elbow you injured playing tennis with me at the club? All right, so you need to... You need to get the information from Joe Thomas's Facebook feed? All right, well, if you say you need it, here you go. Here's your sign. And that's happening too frequently. And, and part of it is shrugged off, well, the courts are really backed up, Joe, and we need efficiency. We need to, we need to get stuff through these systems. And yes, the courts are backed up. Courts are backed up because we don't have enough courtrooms. The population has grown by threefold, approaching fourfold. And we haven't grown the number of courtrooms that are supposed to be the places we go to petition for justice, not fear because that there's some room built for retribution. So we'll continue to follow up on, on that, the, uh, sh the standoff on I-64. Hopefully, uh, Corinne Geller and the folks from the Virginia State Police will have a statement shortly. Our uh, man, Tommy Stafford at Blue Ridge Life, is on it with uh, Corinne Geller, their spokesperson. We'll also uh, have Mark Warner's statement regarding uh, the possibility that there was a cyber attack on the, crew, the freighter ship, the Dolly, before it crashed. in the Baltimore Harbor, and, and still, and as I said this yesterday, I think a lot of the folks should be lauded for getting a channel open already through there. Um, so we'll be watching this, and again, on the subject of the firearms, understand what's going on. So, so the, there are two subtextual stories to the firearms bills that you're hearing, and the first one is the charges that were filed against the uh, pr assistant principal at the elementary school, Richneck Elementary School, where warning signs, much to the same way warning signs were disregarded in the in uh, Parkland, Florida. It's a shocking lack of response to multiple warnings. This is from the grand jury's report, that the assistant principal showed a shocking, quoting from their, their report, lack of response to multiple warnings about the six-year-old 
and that they may have had a gun just in the hours before the kid shot Abby Zwerner, his teacher. Quote the report. The child was not searched. The child was not removed from class. The police or student resource officer was not called, the report said. Ebony Parker was charged with eight counts of felony child neglect in this case. It's about the, the human that's going to do the violence and how do you stop it. That's the hard bit. That's the part that we don't want to get into because, I don't know, victim shaming and all the other things that we're not supposed to do. And meanwhile, these schools, they want more money for mental health care professionals, but then nobody goes to them because of the stigma of going to a mental health care professional. Uh, well, that's it for us today. Again, so we uh, Friday morning, um, Bob Good, Congressman Bob Good, who we just played there, will talk about the FISA deal. Uh, there also uh, my interactions, hopefully ask Mark Warner about this Dolly story, uh, maybe even Ben Klein from deep inside the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, but until uh, tomorrow, so long, and thanks for all the fish.